Hello, and welcome to Two Dancing Clams. Procedural textures are great, I love them, but sometimes they're too CPU intensive to use in scenes, and also sometimes you just need texture files to use in other programs. This video shows how to convert a procedural texture in Blender to seamlessly tiled diffuse, roughness, and normal files for use in Blender or anywhere else. In the interest of brevity, I'll touch on how to handle height, gloss, and metallic files, but I won't demonstrate them specifically. This process will be done entirely in Blender with no need for external image manipulation. Because the seamlessness is accomplished with a mathematical trick, the tiling is absolutely precise. If you search for how to create seamlessly tiled textures, you'll find a lot of references to a program called Materialize. It's an absolutely brilliant piece of software uh, distributed by Bounding Box software, and it's free. It works great for turning pictures into textures, especially pictures that have strong horizontal and vertical components, like brick walls and tree bark. They give you a great place to hide seams. Um, with procedural textures, I've had no luck with it. Um, as you adjust the overlap, you can see you can see where that line is. And even if it disappears visually from the diffuse map, the line in the uh, normal and or height map is always a giveaway, and it's almost impossible to get rid of it. And the other problem I've run, in, run into with this program is if your texture depends on a height map, Materialize is only capable of handling 8-bit uh, height maps, which is 256 values, which leads to obvious stair-stepping when you try to use that texture. You can take the 8-bit height map and pull it in a program like GIMP or Photoshop and upsample it to 16 bits, which helps a lot, but then that tends to leave a dull edge where the values got averaged with zero. That can also be fixed, but again, you can see how many steps you're getting into here. If you're starting with procedural textures anyway, you might as well just skip any external programs and just deal with it in Blender. Just a little setup to get us kicked off. First, I want to turn on the screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing. Also, I'm going to make use of Node Wrangler. So go up to Edit Preferences and make sure that's turned on. And Node Wrangler is turned on because it's always on with me. To get started, we need to make a texture. I'd like to do that on a plane. And I am going to blow through this at record speed. Uh, this texture is inspired by Ryan King Art. Uh, the, there's a link to the specific video in the description below. Um, I'm going to blow through this because this video is not about creating procedural textures. It's about tiling them, and I don't want to spend too much time doing this. First, create a new texture. Control T to get these bad boys. Don't need that. Do need a noise texture. And we'll also be using a Voronoi texture. Indeed, we'll be needing two of these, so Control shift d to duplicate with everything attached. This top one, scale, we'll, scale of 5 is fine. We want 15 detail. 0.5 is fine for roughness. Cool. Um, this one, Scale is fine. Excellent. On this one, we want a scale of 3. Detail, 15. Roughness, again, is fine. In this one, we want a scale of 2. Now I want a couple of color ramps. Actually, I lied. We need 3. On this one, I'm going to leave the bounds where they are, but we want to change the colors to gray. So the exact value I'm going to use is 8 Charlie three times. And for this one, we're going to use 33 three times. On this one, we're going to leave the colors where they are, but we want to narrow them up 
So I'm going to take this down to 0.45. This Voronoi is going to use the distance to edge algorithm. I'm going to leave this one the way it is. I want to blend. These two. With a factor of 0.3. And this. And this will be our base color. This will be our roughness. We'll also need a bump map. With a strength of 0 0.3, 0 0.35. And this comes in too with a strength of 0.25 and that's a normal map. This should be darken. And now if we've done everything right, we can change our render engine to cycles and that is our texture. The sparkly bits tell me I've missed something and what I missed was in this color here. This needs to be Charlie 2 three times. Yeah, that fixed the roughness. Excellent. Also, before we move on, I'm going to change this to GPU compute. This will make the uh, baking work much faster. And that's it for setup. Don't have to mess with the camera or anything else because this is all done using math. Now that the texture is complete, it's time to make it seamless. So what we want to do is make it so that the right side is continuous with the left side of this texture and the top is continuous with the bottom. That way we, when we create the files, they're pre-seamless. We don't have to do anything more. Now the way this is accomplished is simply by wrapping a three-dimensional texture around on itself through the fourth dimension. That only makes very little sense to me, too. I went looking for an explanation of it and was unable to find it. We need to process exactly one trip around a circle. So one trip around a circle is 360 degrees or two pi radians. And we need to process each coordinate, x, y, and z, separately. So let's split these out. The x will go through a sine function and a cosine function. Same thing for the y. Now we'll stick them back together. And here's where the fourth dimension comes into it. So we've created the x, y, and z for this mathematical transformation. But we have one more coordinate. And that is handled by the fourth coordinate on these textures. So we'll go ahead and flip these over to from 3D to 4D. This will become our vector input, and this will become the fourth coordinate, the W value. One side effect of the multiplying the vector by 2 pi at the beginning of this is the texture gets sized down considerably. This could be the effect you want, in which case just leave it. I usually want to take it back to something like well, what I started with, and I've found that dividing by dividing these scales by four will do that. Let's create the texture files. We're already in the render settings, which is where we want to be. I'm going to turn this max samples down to 128. Um, you can even go 
Ah, uh, no, let's turn this down to one to sixty-four. Um, that will dramatically speed up the time. Uh, we'll go down. We need to be in cycles, but we already did that. Go down to bake. We will never use the combined. Let's start with the diffuse. And we want no lights in the world to uh, interfect. We want no lights from the world. And in standard baking technique, we need to create a image texture to bake into. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call it baked. And I'm just going to do 2K for this. I'm just going to do 2K for now. And to do the baking, make sure this is selected. Make sure your the single object in the scene is selected. And hit bake. I'm going to trim out the time it takes to do this. But generally speaking, on these maps, 20 to 30 seconds is all it takes. Now let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to drag out a new window. And we got it. Now we'll just save this image. And I'm going to call it diffuse. Next, we'll do the normals. It's as simple as changing this to normal and hitting bake again. And that looks nice and normally, so let's save it. Now, I will say, if your procedural texture has any metallic component, before you do any of this, disconnect the metallic and set metallic to zero. Um, having metallic at anything other than zero totally interferes with the rest of this process. If your material is solid metal, the only thing you need to do is create a all white bitmap of whatever size you need. That's easiest to do in, a, in an external editor. If you actually have a uh, metallic map, you can render it as in the same way you'd render a diffuse, just tie it into the base color or render it as a mission. Uh, and the same thing goes for a height map. For our purposes, the last thing we need is a roughness. And bake. And that looks nicely rough. So let's save that. One thing I just remembered is that Blender does not like the name normals. So I'm going to change that real fast to normal. Now, to create a plane and put this texture on it. Shift A, push plane, move it to the side, give it a texture. Now, use the node wrangler trick of selecting the shader, control shift T, and giving it our textures. Nice. Now, you can see it is not identical. Um, you can fiddle with it. In this case, what I've noticed is it helps It helps if it's 4K. Um, it also helps if the normals get goosed a little bit. Um, you can do that here, or you can do it before you create the texture maps. But I will say that is pretty darn good. And to show that it has been actually tiled, let's change the scale to 4. And that is pretty sweet. And you can see there are no seams anywhere. Nice. That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.